This is the weekend edition of iFiber One News, where we present some of the top stories from this week and your weekend weather forecast. I'm Bethany Jenks. Stay tuned for the weekend edition of iFiber One News. From the iFiber One HD studio here in the heart of the Columbia Basin, this is iFiber One News. Your number one source for local news, sports headlines, and our very own Weather Center forecast covering the entire Columbia Basin. This is iFiber One News, and it starts now. One of our top stories for this week was about volunteers at the Afreda Food Bank gearing up for the busy holiday season. Reporter Jeff Chu has the story. Afreda Food Bank's season of giving is right around the corner. Between 10 a.m. and noon, December 19th, the food bank distributes holiday food baskets for needy families and gifts for the kids at Afreda Recreation Center. Food bank manager Mike Donovan said it's an annual tradition that goes back many years. If, in fact, you want one of those Christmas baskets, like I said, call this number here. Food Bank's phone number is 509-754-5772. Ifreda Food Bank gave donated gifts to 242 children last year. Gift cards are popular to buy food at local restaurants. We plan on 250 Christmas baskets with toys. And last year we had a little over 216, so we're a little bit short, which is fine. It doesn't bother us to be short. We'd rather be short than long. In that regard, but I, we purchased for approximately uh, 250. Donovan put out a call for more turkey donations for the holiday food baskets, and he's confident they will arrive in time. If anybody out there would like to donate a turkey, we'd sure like to have them. Uh, we need 250. We got about 50 or 60, I guess, in the freezer. Donovan describes the Afreda community as generous, with more than 150 food bank volunteers and a number of organizations helping raise money to buy food. We get gifts from everywhere. Mostly, you know, churches donate uh, toys, and um, the high school is amazing. Those kids raise about four or five thousand dollars a year. They bring in cash money, and then they go up and. Uh, so many of them every night go up to Walmart or someplace and, and spend it and buy toys for age-appropriate uh, age groups. The food bank operates year-round. Since 07, it went, it was always flat, and then 07 we went like this, and we kind of maintained that level now, and we feed approximately, oh, 1,500 to 2,000 people a month. We served 19,376 people last year out of this facility, and we gave them uh, 169 tons of food. Now, 169 tons of food is a lot of food. The average going out of here with each family member is around 15 to 18 pounds per family member, 50 to 60 pounds per family. I'm Jeff Chu for iFiber One News. A group of Moses Lake residents are appealing the site plan for a future WinCo and want the city to look at possible traffic impacts. Reporter Joe Utter has the details. Traffic around a future WinCo in Moses Lake has drawn an appeal from a group of concerned people. A group of residents refiled an appeal of the city's mitigated determination of non-significance of the company's plan for the property. The group, called a stronger Moses Lake, is headed by Donna Anderson. She is one of the people who initially raised concerns about traffic impacts. Anderson said she is not opposed to WinCo Foods coming to the city but she wanted the city to address potential traffic problems for Stratford Road and Central Drive. The group's attorney is Michael Whipple, and he is asking for the city to complete a study to predict potential traffic problems. Whipple stated the city's comprehensive plan states the Stratford and Valley Roads intersection is at the lowest grade for traffic conditions. Senior planner Ann Henning stated the city determined the existing street infrastructure is adequate for the additional traffic. This is Joe Utter for i Fiber One News. And now we take a look at people being sought by law enforcement. This is Sheriff Tom Jones with the Grand County Sheriff's Office. Each of the people you see here have a warrant for their arrest. If you see any of these people, we ask you to not attempt to detain or apprehend them, but call us at 509-762-1160 or send us an email at primetips at co.grant.wa.us. If the person is presenting a danger, call 911. With your help, we can bring these people to justice and make our community safer. 
We'll be right back after this. When the cold rolls in, it's time to turn on the heater and cozy up with a book. But turning up the heat can mean higher electric bills. And for some families in tough times, that could mean choosing between a warm meal or a warm house. For decades, people like you have extended a hand to help local families in need pay those winter electric bills. Share the warmth this winter to help keep your neighbor warm by giving a little when you pay your Grant PUD bill. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Cristina Sanchez and with your local weather segment brought to you by Barry Motors, one great place to buy and service a car. Over the weekend and for next week, we do expect multiple storm systems that are going to bring some rain and snow across the area. Ample of tropical moisture coming in from the Pacific over the weekend and into next week, bringing significant rainfall for lower elevations, more rain and snow for higher elevations over next week. And for this Saturday morning, we do expect to have a wintry mix across our Columbia Basin, especially to our north. This morning, low temperatures right around the low 30s for us in Ephrata. Our average low temperature is 23, average high is 36. High temperature today right around the low 40s and the record high temperature was set back in 07 the record high was 60 degrees for us uni freight and for you in Moses Lake this morning close to the average low temperature which is right around 25 degrees your low temperature this morning 27 and your high temperature in the low 40s average highs 37 and your record high temperature was set back in 1975 your record high was 55 degrees as the high temperature currently we still have those temperatures in the mid 30s with mostly cloudy skies, light winds coming in from the southwest up to 5 miles per hour, lingering snow throughout the opening hours along the Cascades and across the mountains. But as we go into this Saturday morning notice, this storm system arrives bringing showers and also significant rainfall for the coast. As we go into the afternoon, more snow showers for the Cascades, lower elevations, a wintry mix. We do expect to have a wintry mix across our area and just to our north, so slick roads throughout this Saturday. But as we go into Saturday evening, improving conditions with mostly cloudy skies, across our area and for the Cascades once again more snow showers and another storm system arrives bringing also more showers along the coast heavy rainfall as far as for the inland northwest mostly cloudy skies for this Saturday night into Sunday morning as far as we go into the temperatures Highs will increase for Sunday in the low 40s above the average high temperature for this time of year for us here in Ephrata. For Monday, we will start the next work week with high temperatures in the mid 40s. Then we'll be close to the 50s as we go into Tuesday, but we will continue to see more rainfall as we end this weekend. And also as we begin the next work week, I do expect to see around a couple of inches of rain within the next seven days for us here in Ephrata. Low temperatures will be right around the low 30s as we go into Sunday morning, but slick roads for this Saturday with patchy fog in the morning as we will have that winter mix and mostly cloudy skies throughout the day. Then once again, you're gonna need that umbrella and high temperatures will continue to increase. Thank you for being with us. We'll be right back with sports. To save some energy, I've used Einstein's mass energy equivalents to design the haptic suits you see in front of you. They will maintain our core body temperature while we completely turn off our heat and air conditioning. With the money we save on our Grant PD bill, I'll be expecting that trip to Disneyland this year. You don't need to be a super genius to save energy and money. Visit grantpud.org to learn how. The new flamethrower cheeseburger now with a five buck lunch. I'm going flamethrower today. Remember what happened last time? I'm going flamethrower today. Gary, do you remember what happened last time? I'm going flamethrower today. Remember what happened last time? <laughs> Comes with a Sunday now. I can handle it. You know your body, Gary. Go Flamethrower. Now the DQ 5 buck lunch comes with the new jalapeno bacon flamethrower cheeseburger plus fries drink and a sundae. This is fan food, not fast food. 
Well, I'm fairly confident a low-scoring, mistake-filled contest wasn't what Coach Matt Strophe envisioned when his girls stepped out on the hardwood for the opening game of the 2015-16 season. The Chiefs were able to work out the bugs, but it wasn't a pretty sight to witness at home Tuesday. Sean Wells has a story. It was a defensive battle in Moses Lake as the Chiefs hosted Southridge in non-conference action. Moses Lake jumped out to an early lead behind star guard Jamie Loetta. Both teams had trouble finding a rhythm on offense, leading to fast break opportunities off turnovers. The Chiefs went on a run late in the second quarter to take a 22-10 lead into halftime. Jimmy Loetta led all scorers at the break with seven points. It was another slugfest in the second half, but the Chiefs held on, taking the contest 36-21. Southridge finished with 10 second chance points, while Moses Lake totaled 13 steals. Jamie Loetta was the leading scorer for the Chiefs with 11 points. Her sister and Gonzaga commit Jesse Loetta finished with six. Abby Rathman played aggressive in the post for Moses Lake, limiting the Suns 6-1 center Ellie Smith to zero points. Moses Lake now moves to 1-0 on the season and hit the court next this Friday at Kennewick. Two local high school football teams remain on their quest for a state championship this weekend at the Tacoma Dome. Elmira Cooley Heartline got past number one ranked Liberty Christian 82-70 at Edgar Brown Stadium in Pasco last weekend. The Warriors will take on Lumi Nation for the 1B eight-man title Friday at 4 p.m. The Royal Knights crushed arch rival Connell 47-7 at Lions Field to make it to the big dance for the 13th time in school history. Here's a look at how they won it and who they'll match up with for all the 1A marbles Saturday afternoon. Jaden Jenks threw for four touchdowns and ran for another, and Royal routed Carnell 47-7 in state semifinal action at Lions Field in Moses Lake. A 61-yard strike from Jenks to Sam Christensen got Royal on the board early. It was the only score of the first quarter. Christensen hauled in his second touchdown pass of the game to open third quarter scoring. Joe Lang's 75-yard pick six made it 40-0 Royal. Danny Cueva's 17-yard fourth quarter run capped the night scoring. Undefeated Royal extends its win streak to 13 games. The Knights will battle it out with the 12-1 Kings Knights for the 1A state championship at 1 p.m. Saturday at the Tacoma Dome. It's the first dance on the big stage for Kings. Royal will be making its 13th trip to the title game. The Knights have won six championships and have been runner-up six times over a 29-year span. We'll be sure and tune in Saturday at 3 p.m. for our live broadcast of Big Ben Basketball when the Lady Vikings host the Gonzaga U Club team. Have a great weekend. We'll be back after this short break. You don't have to drive to Seattle for exceptional cancer care. Confluence Health's cancer program delivers world-class care close to home. We have a highly experienced oncology team in a state-of-the-art facility, and we're a member of the Seattle Cancer Care Alliance, which gives our patients access to world-renowned therapies developed at Fred Hutchinson, the University of Washington Medicine, and Seattle Children's. Together with the SCCA, we're delivering world-class cancer care close to home. Well, one thing I knew from being a patient myself was that a dental office is a scary place to come to. And so we wanted everything possible to make sure that our office is a comfortable place for our patients to visit. And the patients that I have, my clients, have made me a part of this community and we want to give back in every way possible. Our next story is about the Grant PUD's new visitor and education center at the Wanapum Dam. The PUD debuted the facility earlier this week. Reporter Devin Higgins has the story. This is a great day, let me tell you, to have this many people here for the grand opening of this visitor center is just phenomenal. And to have all of the young people here is double phenomenal. It's really cool. <laughs> The Grand PUD opened the doors on its new visitor and education center at the Wampum Dam on Tuesday. 
The $1 million facility was built as part of the utility's new license with the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission and features displays and exhibits showing the history of the Columbia River before and after the dams were built in the 1950s. Fourth and sixth grade students from Afraidus Parkway and Grant Elementary Schools were invited to be part of the grand opening, as was Representative Tom Dent, who said understanding the history of Grant County will help with what direction it goes in in the future. For those of you who know me, you know, I'm a student of the Old West and I love the past. And I love to study the past. I love to know where we've been. And you know, many of us wish we could live in the past until we live there for a while. And we have a saying in aviation that those that cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. I think it's important that we remember where our past and where we came from. You know, and we have centers like this in visitor centers and we can talk about what we're doing and we can preserve, we can preserve our natural resources, we can preserve our fish, we can preserve what we do, but there's another reason for this dam to be in the river. You know, and that's going to provide us, uh, you know, provides us a lot of things to make our life better, you know. The center features interactive exhibits demonstrating how the PUD uses the Wanapum and Priest Rapids dams and how the turbines and generators provide hydroelectric power to the county. There's also exhibits highlighting the ecology of the Columbia River Basin and the wide varieties of fish which pass through the dams every day. Commissioner Tom Flint was a key player in putting the visitor center together and said it's an important component in helping people understand the utility's role in Grant County. You know, we do a lot of great things here at Grant County PUD, and a lot of it nobody sees. And uh, a lot of us and a lot of our people have been throughout the county, been to other visitor centers, other dams, and uh, we really didn't have something that told our story. And uh, so that's always been a, a big uh, goal of mine and shared it with the commission and management. And uh, so it's taken some time to get us here, but we are here. And seeing the kids interact with the displays today uh, just uh, really made it all worthwhile for me. This PUD belongs to everybody in Grant County. And uh, there are a lot of people that come here, they don't know the story, they have no idea. You know, they just turn on a light switch and uh, that's what they know about us. But uh, we'll be able to uh, show people and uh, have an area where you can uh, demonstrate that, show the history. Uh, it's, it's a big asset for us as a utility and it's a big asset for our community. In Mattawa, Devin Higgins for iFiber One News. We'll be right back. We are real students, and this really is our college. My dream will change the outcome of my life. My college is allowing me to achieve my dream. My dream is to be a pilot. My dream is to be a nurse. Only you can determine your dream. Big Bend will help you get there. What's your dream? speed like never before. When you connect to Grant PUD's high-speed network, visit grantpud.org to learn more. Welcome back. The next story is about a group of volunteers at a Moses Lake church offering free meals and clothing to people in need. Reporter Jeff Chu has the story. <laughs> on any Thursday, it's soup and sandwiches at Our Lady of Fatima Catholic Church in Moses Lake. A cheerful group of volunteers headed up by church soup kitchen founder Cleo Stevens serves lunch to needy families and individuals beginning at 11 a.m. inside the church's community room. Volunteers cook the soup and build the sandwiches in the kitchen at the church off Grape Drive at Dale Road. Stevens discussed why she founded the church's soup kitchen eight years ago, which today serves up to 100 people. Lonely people, and they come for the company, and they might sit here for the whole two hours, but they come for the company. They come, and this is lunch out, you know. It's, it's a free lunch, so it's lunch out, and, and, a lot, and we get a lot of regulars. They, they come all the time. They come every week, and, uh, and they're poor. You know, granted, you know, but it's a place to come, it's warm, and they usually sit with all the same people all the time, and, you know, it's just a little, 
flinch out. Stevens said her inspiration was Mother Teresa, a Catholic nun who dedicated her life to helping the poor. Since the soup kitchen opened, it has evolved into something much more than a place to eat lunch once a week. Today, there's a used clothing closet, a cupboard for non-perishable items donated by church members, plus free showers and haircuts. Volunteers serve the food, and Stevens said you don't have to be Catholic to volunteer. Bernice Cosper, a volunteer who helps run the clothing closet, explained how it works. We uh, accept donations for clothes for the needy, and uh, we separate them and then put them by uh, department sizes. We have blankets, pillows, uh, uh, ideas that uh, anybody might have for bringing more stuff in that utilizes for the community. And right now we got a ton of donations for little kids, which is great. She said donations often come in. For example, a family recently donated 20 bags of clothing. Cosper explained who the clothing closet serves. Right now it's, it's homeless, people that maybe have lost their job uh, on social services that doesn't cover the needs and lots of times that can be um, shampoos, soaps, uh, toiletries, things that they need till their next check. To donate to the soup kitchen or the clothing closet, contact the church at 509-765-6729. The church is now accepting donations for its giving tree, funds of which help keep the cupboard stocked. I'm Jeff Chu for i Fiber One News. Rounding out this week's news coverage is a story about the upcoming Festival of Trees auction on December 12th to support Habitat for Humanity. Reporter Joe Utter has the story. Habitat for Humanity of Moses Lake hosts its 21st annual Festival of Trees auction on Saturday, December 12th. Festivities began at 5.30 p.m. at the Grant County Fairgrounds 4-H building on Airway Drive in Moses Lake. The event begins with a silent auction, social hour, and hors d'oeuvres. A short presentation will be followed by dinner at 7 p.m. A live auction features trees decorated by different businesses and individuals and come with gifts underneath them. Single tickets are $65, tickets for two are $125, and tickets for a table of eight are $450. To buy tickets or donate items for the auctions, go to www.habitatmoseslake.org. Habitat volunteers have helped families build several homes in the Moses Lake area. Proceeds from the auction go towards building more homes for families in need. This is Joe Utter for iFiber One News. That wraps up our weekend edition. iFiber One News will be back on Monday at 5 p.m. with the latest news from around the Columbia Basin. Thank you for watching.